Hey there! Uh, today we're gonna, I thought I would just not show you my face because today I want to talk about two pens. Uh, and not, actually not even so much the pens, uh, but more so the nibs. Okay, so these are two pens uh, by Fountain Pen Revolution. There's the, uh, the Himalaya and then there is, uh, sorry, the Himalaya and then there is the Treveni. Okay, now what makes these pens so special? I have reviewed a Treveni before and I have reviewed a Himalaya before. You can say Himalaya too if you really want to. Um, but Kevin from Fountain Pen Revolution sent me two of his new nibs and these are flex nibs. Now I know that you guys love flex nibs, so I thought I would do this. Now I'm not really gonna talk about the pens because the pens in this case are just a means to an end. Right, they just hold the nib so you can use them and as I said I've reviewed both so I don't really want to go over this too much I will talk a little bit about the price, okay? So the Himalaya um, $29 US um, and you can get the steel ultra flex nib that's on here for $13 extra um, This one also happens to have an ebonite feed um, notice the crescent cutouts which make the nib more flexy but beyond the crescent cutouts there is also the ever pleasant deep slit um, you can see it there for most nibs right you have a slit and then you have a breather hole and it ends there but this slit just keeps going down and down and down and down it's very very deep um, which means that the tines of the nib will spread open more easily and not just that um, you know, because of those cutouts uh, you actually uh, get some, some easy flex out of it. And there's this Treveni. Now this Treveni base model is about $50, is $50. Um, but then this one comes with a very interesting, I think, 14 karat solid gold flex nib. And there's a couple of things I really like about it. Again, deep slit, also pretty long narrow tines, which typically helps in flexibility. In this case, a plastic feed. There is a nib unit available uh, and you can get a an ebonite feed from Fountain Pen Revolution. Just look around on their website a bit. The uh, gold nib, just the nib, is 129 US dollars and then there is the uh, the gold nib plus the ebonite feed for 130 dollars. If you're gonna go for it, I would go for the ebonite feed as well. I don't know if you can easily fit it into this pen, um, but it's not a bad idea to have an ebonite feed for that pen. These pens are available in several finishes, so that is not really a, a, a big deal. Um, so you can get those, no, no issue there. Uh, if you don't like this particular finish, there are other options for you. Okay, if you wonder what I was just doing, I was just making sure, because I had the, the pens uncapped for a bit, I do want to make sure they're not dried out, so I just quickly scribbled a bit with them, and they seem to work. Okay, um, before I show you the writing sample, because then you can just make up your own mind, how do they perform? I find this ultra uh, flex nib, the steel nib, actually to outperform the gold nib. That's why I said maybe you should get a an ebonite feed for this, because this pen does have an ebonite feed and the ink flow seems to be a little richer than that on the 14k nib. This one runs dry and railroads a little faster than the ultra flex nib, I have the feeling. Modern flex, always difficult, right? Vintage 14k flex, forged nibs, um, are considered the holy grail of flex writing and I don't think any modern manufacturer has been able to really recreate vintage flex. There have been some good attempts though and I think both of these are nice attempts and what I particularly enjoy is that you have the option of a solid 14 karat gold nib because most flex nibs are steel. I know there are some available that are actually gold but it's nice to have another option. As to the price 129 US, I don't think that's bad. I know that it sounds like a lot, especially on a $50 pen, but don't forget, a lot of companies uh, now charge 150 US, uh, some of them 160 US for a gold nib upgrade over steel. So given that that is 14K flex nib, I think it's pretty market conform as to the price, and it is a flex nib too. So I, I don't think that is particularly horrid. Sorry, just taking a sip of tea. So, interesting, um, the biggest issue is, do they run dry? Yes, both pens will run dry. Both of these pens are very nice for shorter quotes. I don't know if you want to write a whole letter uh, in full flex writing with these, 
you'll probably have to reprime the feed a number of times uh, by operating the uh, converter. That's the way it is. This is how modern flex works. I have not yet seen a modern flex nib that does not railroad and that does not run dry. That's it. Now, here's the thing. I can talk about this all I want, but this is one of those things where you just have to see it. Okay, so let me zoom out a little bit. Whoops. And let me just write. You can make up your mind. You can see if this is something you want to purchase. So I'm not going to write down Fountain Pen Revolution. I'm just going to write down FPR. This is the 14K uh, flex nib. Okay, I'm already flexing a bit. I'm taking it easy. Um, the thing is, I can do all of my regular stuff of the, the, the writing sample, but I don't really think you're interested in this. What you're interested in is does it flex or not. So, I slow down a bit. I also found I have to make the angle a little higher than I usually do as I write. And I want you to know I have not primed this feed. So I used it last yesterday. I put the pen away and I just uncapped it for this review. Okay, so this is what you can expect after, let's say, a night of maybe drying out, etc. Not terrible. I adjust my speed and it goes pretty well. Let's do a bit of actual writing. I am not pressing this nib to the max. I am slowing down, making sure there is some surface tension and the ink does not, you know, fly out of the nib in such a way that it actually runs dry, it goes back or whatever. Um, you can see it can have line variation and it is quite pleasant. Um, now I want to show you, so I'm, you, you, you're doing this, I'm going to before priming it, I'm going to push this nib to the max, okay, that I think that is a sensible maximum. As you can see, that is a wide line and it is still springing back. I'm not destroying this nib, the only issue is I get a lot of railroading. Now, all of this also depends a little bit on the viscosity of the ink. Uh, if you have a slightly thicker ink, that can help with flexing, etc. Uh, this is quite simply Waterman Blue Black that may not have been the ultimate choice. So here's the thing. I'm now showing you the difference. I have just primed this feed. I have forced a drop of ink down the feed so far that it fell out of the nib. Okay. Now that it's primed, let's try this again. And as you can see, I do not need to modulate my speed because it just keeps going and I can push this hard and far. Look at this line variation. That is a lot of line variation. I'm just going to do dashes here. I'm not, again, not modulating my speed. And as you can see, with the prime feed it picks up. It's very hard. You can't really fairly expect a modern flex nib to keep up with this. So if I do it a bit slower, That is pretty serious line variation, I would say. Now then, let's look at the Fountain Pen Revolution Ultra Flex Nib. This is a steel nib, but with an ebonite feed. And I'm just making sure there's still ink in here, which I, th yeah, that was good. Okay, same story. This is not primed. Um, this is out of the, not out of the box, but out of the cap, just uncapped. Ultra Steel flex. bit more feedback, I find, as I write. Um, so again, you have the thing, you can write with it, but that's not really what you care about. Okay, that was me going fast. Sometimes that helps to prime it a little bit. Going slower. The biggest difference I feel is that this nib flexes more easily. And that makes sense, it has these crescent cutouts, so it is going to open up its tines a little bit more easily. The advantage is, you don't need as much pressure, and for some reason I find this ink flow keeps up better, which I blame on the ebonite feed. Ebonite conducts ink a bit better than plastic does. 
Okay, let's push this one to the max, unprimed. Okay, and I was also not going slow. Massive line variation, but as you can see, railroading and the nib runs dry. Now I'm priming, I'm doing this off camera. Okay, I have primed this feed, squeezed out two big drops of ink. So with a primed feed, let's try this again. I'm really pushing this hard, okay? Just repriming that because I'm also not slowing down. And usually for flexi writing like this, you would slow down your, your writing speed. And on purpose I was not. So let's let's be fair. And this would have to fill in if you were actually writing. But for the sake of the review, I will not do that. So, what's the bottom line? Well, especially this one, right? You can buy one of these pens for 29 bucks plus $13 for the Ultra Flex nib in steel. $42, you have a Flex pen. Uh, are there cheaper options? Yep. Noodlers comes to mind. Uh, I will say I find the performance of this pen very good. So, that's very nice. The 14K, uh, 14K option for those of you who want a gold nib, well, that's an option too. More expensive, but it is an option. You can see it works well, but expect to have to prime this. I would like to see how this works with the ebonite feed, so I'm probably going to have to pester Kevin to send me one of these so I can show you how that writes. In any case, here's the performance. I think for modern flex this is not bad. I know there's railroading, I know that's the case, but every single modern flex nib I have used, whether it is Noodlers, uh, Conklin with their, their uh, uh, what was that thing called, the, 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 the Ultra, the, I forget what it's called, but the, the flex nib, Omniflex, that's it. That one railroads, uh, I've used other brands, they railroad. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it this is a fact of life, okay? Modern flex nibs are going to railroad, they're going to run dry. We just lost that knowledge and technology to create perfect flex nibs, and it's okay. If you really need flex, probably get 14K vintage flex, but if you want something affordable just to play with, no issue, just expect to have to prime your pen once in a while. That's all there's to it. I hope this was useful. A very kind thank you to Kevin for sending me this pen, the, the, these pens with the nibs. I hope this was useful. I hope the demonstration helped you out in making a decision. And uh, that's all there's to it. I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.